Artistic endeavor on the island of Cyprus, identified with the great art of Constantinople, journeys along the same paths. Humble village craftsmen and artists, often in partnership with monks and hermits fleeing Constantinople as the great city fell into Ottoman hands, express their piety and dedication to the church, demonstrating their love and worship of the word and acts of God. The face of Christ and that of the Holy Virgin emerged from the exalted world of the church and entered the Cypriot home and everyday life, and Byzantine tradition prospered triumphantly in the human world, conveying to man the holiness and greatness of God. Artists carried this tradition through into the centuries that followed, so that today it can manifest itself in the work of many contemporary Cypriot artists. A striking example is the work of George Paul Yurgiu. The faces of village priests reflect images depicted in icons, just as the faces of women bearing their children are reminiscent of the image of the Holy Virgin. Similarly, the work of Adamantios Diamantis, another Cypriot artist who studied in Britain, was deeply influenced by the Byzantine idiom, and his art is ecumenical, in line with Byzantine conventions and style. Byzantium was present then and remains present now in all forms of art, in music, painting, architecture and literature. In difficult times, especially as under Frankish and Ottoman rule, Byzantine art became a refuge for the Cypriots, a way of keeping body and soul together and a way of expressing love and peace in the omnipresence of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Byzantium is the eastern expression of Christianity, extending throughout the oldest parts of the Roman Empire. Since the time of Constantine the Great, Byzantium persists and continues to persist right through to today. Christian Cyprus encounters Byzantium through the visit of Saint Helena. The island becomes Christian through the preachings of Saints Paul, Barnabas and Marcus and Cyprus is deeply indebted to Constantinople, the capital of the Byzantine Empire. I was once asked by ecumenical patriarch Bartholomaeus as to the importance of the inheritance of Byzantium in Cyprus. I answered that Cyprus received from the town of towns an amazing inheritance, but I stressed that two were the most important. The truth that resulted from the ecumenical synods as to the essence of man and world, and secondly, the Byzantine Orthodox liturgy that nourishes and gives intellectuality to every Cypriot throughout the ages. The Orthodox liturgy has a number of meanings. It refers to architecture and the important number of monasteries and churches in Cyprus. But it also refers to the icon, and more specifically to that of the Virgin Mary, the mother of Christ. In Cyprus, we have one of the most important icons of the Virgin, that of Panagia Eleusa of the Monastery of Kikos, that used to be the icon of the Byzantine Empire. This icon arrived in the 12th century, and ever since, it is an icon that gives substance to the piety of the Cypriot folk. Most of our monasteries are dedicated to the Virgin Mary. The Orthodox liturgy refers in a parallel manner to the sound, the music of the church, the octoichon, whose origins are to be found in Syria and Palestine, and especially in Jerusalem. It is in the easternmost part of the empire that this sound is created and put into form, to be transferred later on from Constantinople to all the regions of the Byzantine Empire. This Byzantine sound, or ichos as we call it, develops and becomes part of the traditional music that leads to the basis of our own folk music. Today's traditional and folk music finds its origins in the known Byzantine ichos, the sounds that have traveled from ancient Greece to Rome and hence to the Byzantine Empire. Byzantine music is considered to be a continuation of the music the ancient Greeks used to hear, 
Both belong to what we call today the Eastern music. As we know, that music is divided into Western and Eastern. Eastern music has common characteristics with Arab and Byzantine music, but also with Persian and Turkish. A lot of these common elements and characteristics form today's traditional Greek music. I can certainly say that our music bears more Eastern than Western characteristics. Ancient Greeks used to call their scales tropi. The Byzantine named them ihos, and the Arabs and later on the Turks called them makambia. We also give them the name dromi, ways. All these different kinds of names refer to the ancient tropos, but what really differentiates Eastern music from that of the West is the sentiment of harmolipi. It is a composite word of two important Greek words. The one is hara, meaning joy, and the other is lipi, meaning sorrow. Hence, it is a music that combines joy with sorrow. It is different from the West, where we have a minor or a major scale. Here, in the world of the Orient, we have a combination of both sentiments together, and this is the main difference. This sentiment, common in Oriental music, is first found in the Orthodox Church liturgy. We also find it in all the expressions of the Church, marriage ceremonies, baptisms, and funerals. This same passage from joy to sorrow is found today in our traditional music and from the Middle Ages to today, and one can trace it in our own songs, our folk songs, and in the well-known Rembetica. I think that Byzantine music really influenced the traditional music here in Cyprus. Byzantium arrives in Cyprus through what once was called Asia Minor, but mainly from two important areas, that of Constantinople and that of Cappadocia. Through the Lycian gateways and through Cilicia and its metropolis Adana, sounds, ways of life and beliefs arrived on the island. Culture and civilization arrived from the opposite coast to the little town of Kyrenia and from there spread on to Carpasia, Morfu, Famagusta and Paphos. From the very moment of our baptism in the orthodox manner, our life follows the original path that was traced by Byzantium. Joy and sorrow together combined. Our passions, our feast days, our joy. Orthodox people live in joy, and all represents exactly the Byzantine manner, the way. It is the Byzantine liturgy that brings all those sentiments. It is through the liturgy that we reach resurrection, and we can therefore call the Orthodox religion the religion of resurrection. This civilization and culture created within the church reaches out to the people and becomes part of them. It becomes mainly joy that is expressed in songs and dances, and we know that dances of Asia Minor reach the island. The Cypriot Susta is very much a copy of the Susta of Caesarea. We share not only culture, but everyday life with the Lycian and the Cilician coast. Our food bears similarities. We both know the dainties, the kadaifi, the baklava, the dactyla. All is common, food and culture. Our songs also derive from this common background. It is the same parts, the same dromi. Sometimes the sound is identical, but expressed in the Cypriot dialect. Studying the evolution of Cypriot art today, it becomes clear how Byzantine art lies at the origins of contemporary Cypriot creation. It is the authentic passage of the Word of God into everyday life, a unique expression of faith, dedication and piety. It is the way that man perceives divinity. Byzantine art was used by the Cypriots as a unique and tangible expression of divinity as it relates and withholds elements of truth. The image of the Virgin is a presence in the life of every Cypriot from the very moment of his birth, a presence he remains aware of throughout his life. Her face, familiar, adored and cherished, 
often becomes part of him. Thus, Byzantine art expresses sentiments arising from the very depths of the human soul, conveying at once love and fear, the divine and the human, but above all, the commitment and belief in life everlasting. Cyprus remained a province of Byzantium from the foundation of the empire in the 4th century until the end of the 12th century. Indeed, it became one of the great centers of Byzantine art, a source of creative endeavor whose influence became widely diffused. We know that from the beginning, artists from the empire's capital came to work in Cyprus, with local tradition consequently adopting the authentic forms and expressions of Byzantine art. Cypriot artists set about cultivating it and giving it true, faithful and passionate expression. The Byzantine art of Cyprus faithfully renders the deep piety and religious sense of the Cypriot people. Throughout its history, the island has been subjected to rigorous trials, trials that persist to this very day, and has found in the teachings of Christianity refuge and solace, but also liberation and hope. Cyprus converted to Christianity at the time of the Apostles, and a number of splendid basilicas were erected to accommodate the increasing number of worshippers. It is clear from excavations carried out that all these basilicas were richly decorated with frescoes and mosaics. Both in Cyprus and in Greece, it is usually the priests, the chanters, that sing in the church. The same people with the unique deep voices also perform in public and the way they sing traditional songs is definitely influenced by their church singing. And people appreciated this way of expression and participated in the church presence in everyday life. Take for instance the Cypriot singer Kiriakou Pelagia. When she sings it is though she is in church in the same manner. This clearly shows that our folk music has become deeply influenced by our church music. It is known that Cyprus was part of the Byzantine Empire, and a number of important monuments, not only religious ones, still exist and prove that Cyprus was an important part of the empire. It is through these monuments that we can trace the Byzantine culture, and it's only natural for a Cypriot artist to refer to these sites and monuments in the occupied areas of the island, and generally to our civilization, especially if he belongs to the generation that has witnessed the incredible loss and destruction of our cultural heritage after the Turkish invasion of 1974. It is only natural that he wants to be part of this culture, it is only natural that he tries through his art to save what there is to be saved. This is something common to us artists. It is not a feeling that belongs only to me. All artists who were creative in the 1970s and 80s, whether they were musicians, artists or poets, made a tremendous effort to save the remains of our culture and civilization. When we want to understand what Byzantium meant to Cyprus, all we have to do is take a glimpse at the wall paintings of the Church of Arrakis, see the scene of the Dormition of the Virgin in Asinu, and there we will understand that Byzantium offered us the true presence on earth of the world of heaven. The heavenly world that was made to fit our world, our everyday life, our way of being. This world was offered to us through the use of light, the light given through the Savior combined with what we Greeks call metro, a concept which is difficult to explain, a measure for everything. The combination of this Byzantine light and the Greek metro is the substance of Byzantium in art. Christianity found expression in the work of Cypriot artists, their insights and their values, the serene gravity of their faith and the visions of their souls. It put down roots in large basilicas and tiny chapels. The twelve dioceses spread the word of God to the people, and their bishops took part in the ecumenical synods of Nicaea in 325 
and Sardis in 343. The Arab raids ravaged the island between the 7th and 10th centuries. The people rebuilt the burnt churches. Artists worked once more over the destroyed frescoes, and the Komnenian and the Paleologian styles left an unmistakable mark on Cypriot art between the 12th and the 15th centuries. Byzantine art is found in the castles of the Pentadactylus range, those of St. Hilarion, of Buffavento, and Cantara. Byzantine art is found in our monasteries, that of Kikos being the oldest, the monastery of Maharas from the 10th century, the church of Panagia to Araka, the church of Asinu, of St. John Lampadistis, of Panagia Truditisa, of the monastery of Ayas Neophytos, and that of Chrysalo Yatisa. All these monasteries find their origins in the Byzantine period of Cypriot history, when the Byzantines first established a system to fortify the island against the enemy. Each icon represents a particular saint. Most of the Cypriot saints have their origins in Asia Minor, mainly the coast or Constantinople. St. George de Asoritis, for instance, found in the village of Pedolas. In a wall painting, we see the saint on his horse riding on the waves. Octopuses are seen beneath the legs of the horse. He comes from the region of the Athera in Asia Minor, the saint himself being a Cappadocian. Again, the example of the favorite saint of the Cypriots, Aya Marina. Her origins are also from the opposite coast. Saint Mamas, Riding the lion is from Asia Minor. He actually comes from the Pontos region. We have a common hagiography which is vividly expressed in Cypriot art. Let's take a look at Ayas Onofrios, a saint who is depicted nude, covered only by a palm frond. This wall painting is found in the church of Panagia to Araka. When we visited Cappadocia, we found exactly the same saint in exactly the same manner. The similarity is striking. Byzantium is present in Cyprus throughout the centuries. We do not refer to Byzantium as a particular moment in history that began and ended. We know it starts in the third century and its presence is felt until this very day. And this is a particularity one feels with Byzantine art. It is omnipresent. It is part of our everyday life. It influences a huge amount of our time, and a fair amount of this time is dedicated to our arts. We can trace it, with the only exception of the Ottoman rule in Cyprus, from the 3rd century to the 20th or even the 21st century. Cypriot artists are aware of the art movements of Europe, especially those of the 20th century, as a lot of them study in European countries. Art in Cyprus, though, continues a very specific path. It develops both by following the currents of European art, but also keeps a firm ground through the presence of Byzantium and its ecumenality. Our artists treat their subjects according to what is already known to them, what is called by us today a living experience. Beginning with artist Ioannis Kisoneris, who starts his career with religious themes. Throughout his art, he is liberated partly from the religious presence, but one can still sense it throughout his art. The same can be said for artists like Frangudis and Nicolaidou. Adamandius Diamandis and Dilema Hoscanthus are rightfully considered the fathers of Cypriot art. They both studied abroad and brought with them the new trends, the new aspects of European art. Both, though, remained in their field of knowledge, within their living experience that offered them security. They managed to combine both their tradition in art and their new expectations, acquiring in this manner a universality in their expression and art. They know their origins. They are in perfect harmony with both their foundations and the new waves. 
The example of George Paul Yoriu, a self-taught artist from Famagusta, is striking. Through his art, one can see the presence of Byzantium in the Cypriot folk, in the way they stand, in the way they dress, in their manner of being, at every single occasion depicted in his paintings. Important works of art, as the descending of the cross or that of Ayos Piridon, in them one can see that your you can very well follow the European trends, but he chooses deliberately, however, to remain within the known, the living experience, the world of his own knowledge, which is no other but that offered to him through the Byzantine experience. Your you is certainly not a naive painter. He's well aware of the movements of art, as his fellow artists, both Yamandis and Ganthos, are. But they opt for their own expression, that of their own freedom and truth that is perceived in their works. This is probably why their art has gone beyond the borders of our island. Their art has a universality that is unique in its freedom and expression. The same can be said for the works of Yamandis as those of Canthos. Following their traces and recognizing the face in the work of Yamandis in the world of Cyprus, one can clearly state that Byzantine art not only is at the basis of their creations, but also persists in each and every work of art. If one looks at Byzantium today, only two parts of the world maintain its existence. The one is Cyprus, the other is Mount Athos. <laughs>